In the past recent years, there's been two predominant ways of thinking, all to do with your financial freedom and independence. That being the FIRE movement, so financial independence retiring early, and then the opposite side, which is the side hustle movement. But which one is right for you? Now, obviously I've dabbled in both. If you follow my channel for a long time, you will know that I actually believe in an amalgamation of both sides, and we'll deep dive into that in this video. But if you're hearing these concepts, which one is right? And what do they ultimately mean for you and your finances? In today's video, I'm gonna break down both sides and hopefully allow you to pick which one might be right for you to fast track your financial freedom and overall prosperity. So let's cover that FIRE community first. Financial independence, retiring early. And to be very honest, the clue is in the title. The whole point of this community and this goal for their particular situation to basically get free of the nine to five job is retiring early. So how the whole structure works is essentially you want to have passive incomes that allow you to completely not work. This usually means you focus on having a savings pot in the background. So essentially what you're doing the normal way you would retire when you're 65, you've built up a savings pot with your pension or investments that allows you to one day get access to it and then live out the next 30 or 25 years from that pension, that large pot of money. Now, usually those pensions are invested in the stock market and people just wanted to make sure they had a way in their life to not just wait till they're 65, they wanted to actually create it from whenever they decided, even a couple of years down the line, as soon as they could. And that's the focus of of the FIRE community. Can you build up a big pot of money invested usually or in some other kind of passive income where that pot of money indefinitely would keep rewarding you with interest or gains that you could actually withdraw an amount every single year and live off it to support life. Now how this typically works is, as I say, it's usually an investment portfolio that most people go after. So what they will do is they'll switch their focus from living life with their money and instead of maybe doing normal things like spending it and going out Instead, their focus would be primarily building up this savings pot. The quicker they achieve a number that allows them then to live off their investments, then they can actually retire early. So let me deep dive into this thought process a little bit more. The thought process is that your savings pot is typically invested in the stock market. The reason being the returns are usually much higher than any savings account you would get in the bank. You can also get immediate access to it depending on what you choose to invest in. And also there's some kind of predictability depending on what you actually choose. It's all based on your risk factors and your goals when you want access to the money. But in some ways, the longer you leave that pot of money to actually grow, let's say 10 or 15 years at least, then there'll be some reliability on what you can actually withdraw as a wage. Very similar to when it's a pension and you're withdrawing a yearly amount to live off in your pension years. So the whole concept is you save, save, save in your investment or a big saving pot. You then hope to achieve at least about six plus even eight, 10% year on year growth, depending on what you choose. And then there's a whole definition of that you would actually withdraw about three to 4% of your portfolio every single year to then live off. So that total pot, because it's growing by six, 7%, you're never actually eating into getting down in the savings pot. What I mean is, for example, if you're having three or 4% to live off, you're hopefully then making still one or 2% on top. So this pot is still growing growing and effectively allowing your income to grow in line with inflation as well. But you're just committing to withdrawing a small portion of money that you can live off for your bills, for life and everything. So it's very calculated. You're relying on that investment portfolio to be a constant in your life as an income source. It's completely passive. So even if you chose to work or not or whatever you did, you'd always have that money to withdraw. Because these individual companies and the different corporations that you've invested in are always making money hopefully in the background, you don't need to worry about actually working to bring home that paycheck. Now you might have heard of this concept called the 4% rule and that's basically what I've described to you. People build up a savings investment portfolio and then they commit to only withdrawing about 3 or 4% typically because they hope that they'll get 6, 7, 8% plus every single year. So it's always topped back up every year and then some to allow for inflation. Now how we would work out our FIRE number then would simply be the amount of money you need to survive on per year. So the actual 
physical costs, your mortgage potentially, car payments, food, petrol, every single bill would then be that yearly amount, one total amount, and times it by 25. So that would be your financial independence total portfolio you would need in investments to then live off indefinitely. And that would be the goal for this community. Your goal is to save as much as you can, as quickly as you can, so that you can retire early and have that savings portfolio that you can then withdraw 4% from every single year. Now, typically in this community, especially people focus on getting to that magic number. The focus then becomes how can we strip down absolutely everything from our life so that actually the amount of money we need per year is as small as possible because obviously the smallest possible yearly amount then means the smallest possible large amount that you need to have investments. And that's where the focus could be paying off the mortgage very quickly, can be paying off car finance, everything to do with minimizing the total cost is one focus area. And you might have seen the community called the debt-free community as well. That's where their focus has been completely debt-free, no student loans, no mortgage, no nothing. And that's because they want to have as low cost as possible, really with the focus of not being responsible to anyone else should they actually want to support life. They can build up portfolios to then drive the income they need. Now, I think the FIRE community is hugely important to a lot of people because, as I said, it offers an escape route out of the nine to five job and it's completely dependent actually on the amount that you're saving every month. So this doesn't require extra incomes. We can still get there by completely focusing on saving more and more of our money every single month. And it's really all down to the percentage of your wage that you actually save. It's not about the size of your portfolio, how much you earn, it's really about that percentage. So to give you some indications on the FIRE community numbers, basically if you save 10% of your income every single month to achieve FIRE, retire early, you would need approximately about 35 to 40 years then consistently of saving 10% of your monthly amount. If you moved that up closer to 50% of your wages was saved every single month, you'd probably achieve FIRE in about 17, maybe even 15 years. If you make that 65, 70%, well then it could be within five years. And that effectively is because you're living off so little amount of your income compared to actually the amount that you can then put in this investment portfolio. And what I will emphasize is the FIRE community especially is built on passive income. It's usually through investments. Now that could be property, it could be the stock market as well, but it's all about the passive element. I then have the choice what I do in my retirement that I've created early. So as I said, I wanted to go through the pros and cons of each side, so let's tackle them now. So here are the positives as I see it for the FIRE community. It's a really creative way of actually achieving a fantastic goal for a lot of people. We do want everyone to experience true freedom with their time in their life. A lot of people are stuck in the mindset that you have to do the same job until you're 65, and that is simply not true. That is lies. Whatever society has been telling you, you know that it's not the case you do have choice. It all depends on how you want to fund and support your life. And I really applaud the FIRE community as well for the focus being you can do this all yourself. You don't need to wait till you're 65 in order to achieve that goal of actually doing what you want with your time. I also really love that they have creative ways typically of reducing expenses. So you'll often see people actually discuss how they're going to minimize what they're doing with their money to achieve their FIRE number. They might even decide to you know, sell off the house and move different locations they might get rid of cars, they might choose different transportation, they might even focus on meal planning and prepping to reduce food waste and such like that. And it's all really great ideas of how to bring that number of their monthly amount, then their yearly amount down so that more and more of their income can be saved towards their FIRE number. I also really love that the FIRE community also focuses on dreaming big. So the idea is making your retirement, rather than the 65 year age or whenever it needs to be that society tells you, it's all about can we make that happen now so that you can do all the things you want to do with your life? It's all about helping others, perhaps doing your dream job, perhaps even giving to charities. The focus is very much, what do you actually want to do with your time? Then how can we make that happen as quickly as possible for you so that you can start doing what you want? Now, they particularly also focus on ways to actually boost your income as well. So we haven't touched upon that. Typically, it's your saving percentage, but they do also emphasize having second and third jobs as a way to really top up that savings portfolio to make sure they're hitting it quicker. It's almost like a game in a way. They have this number, they have an exact amount of money that they know they need to achieve. So how can we actually do that as quickly as possible? And I like that spirit of it. There's definitely a community spirit 
with the fire community. People resonate towards other people because they've got a goal, they've got a destination in mind. It might be a certain number, but the goal is then to be free from burdens that everyday life might bring you. It might be that you want to do different day jobs. It might even be that you want to just simply volunteer for a living. It didn't matter in the fire community. It was all about what are your big goals? How can we make them happen as quickly as possible? Now, I also really love that the fire community focus on saving and investments, something that I think is totally missing from all financial education when we're growing up. This focus actually on spending your money in ways that works in your favor. And when you're saving and investing, you're simply spending in different ways. And I like the fact also it's the educational piece about investing. It doesn't matter what age you are, what background, what you're doing in society right now, you can work towards having financial freedom. And I really applaud them for that. It's completely independent of who you are, where you come from. Everyone can have the common goal and they'll help you get there. Now on the opposite side, the disadvantages I would see of the FIRE community, really there is a heavy focus on the savings percentage. So that means how much of our income can we absolutely scrape by on so that we can put more and more and more into the savings portfolio. And I think because we have a tangible goal, we then tend to fix upon can we achieve it as quickly as possible and almost forget what's actually happening with normal life. It's kind of for me the emphasis on pausing life right now for yet again another distant date. Even though it might not be 65, it might be 25 or 35, it still feels like we're not satisfied until we've hit this particular date and time when our investment portfolio tells us that we can relax and start to enjoy ourselves. And I think for that reason as well, the percentage savings, how much you're saving, then almost becomes a bit competitive with other people. So it's not only about how much you need to save, it's then can we really save 70, 75% and almost seen as a badge of honor rather than actually the goal, working towards how long it will take you, reducing that amount of time, but also allowing life to still continue without suffering, without pain. You don't want families to really be struggling while they try and achieve some distant goal. You want it still to be enjoyable, but knowing you have this great goal to be financially independent. It's also a very slow process with fire. It's probably the least sexy of both options, to be honest, because it will require 10, 15, 20 years. If you're only able to save, let's say 20 to 30%, it's going to be a slow process for good reason. You need time for this savings pot to build up and you also need their investments to stabilize. You can't just simply hit it within two or three years because your investments could be wildly different over time. You need that smoothing effect to the stock market to make sure there's a constant supply for your money overall. And as I have emphasized, it's not actually dependent on how much you earn. It's purely based on the percentage. So it's something tangible that everyone can relate to. But then, as I said, it tends to lead to the competitive edge. What percentage have you got? Well, I'm going to achieve it quicker. I also don't like the fact that it tends to be targeted at mainly corporate people between the ages of like 25 to 40 who feel stuck. They maybe have been doing the corporate life for five or 10 years. This isn't what they planned. They're just not happy. They're miserable. And it tends to be very similar to other company structures where it goes after a particular type of person who is struggling and says, here you go, I've got the solution for you. We want to feel that everyone's inclusive. And I think sometimes the messaging is more geared towards people who are stuck in their jobs rather than simply this could be financial knowledge that everyone applies, regardless if you want to work a nine to five or not, you could actually do this and achieve it as part of your savings strategy and investment strategy overall. If you did commit to 10, 15 years working with these FIRE principles, you will get the majority of the way there to whatever financial freedom number you have. It's all about time actually doing the skills, the saving, the investing that will get you there. And I really do like that. It's basic, fundamental, great habits that it's really emphasizing. And of course, in the UK especially, this will definitely be on its positive side. We have ways actually we can invest. So it's key strategy for getting financial independence. We can actually invest in things like investment ISAs and in our pensions for longer term retirement, obviously at 65. But our investment ISA is a way that we can actually save in the UK up to £20,000 every single year tax-free as an individual. You can put that in towards your retirement 
retirement fund, your financial independence fund, and actually build that portfolio where you would never have to be taxed either on the money in or the money out. So you could actually have a way to support life using the FIRE principles. That means you don't have to pay tax because of how you've actually invested in the stock market. And if you do want to find out more about investment ISAs in particular, why I absolutely love them and think everyone should have one, you're entitled to one if you're an adult over the age of 18, you can go and check out my other videos. One is titled how to open up an investment ISA using Vanguard. I also have other videos talking about how you actually pick stocks and funds to invest in. So as I said, the other flip side is making passive income sources, so extra income on top of your day job. Now this community in particular is one that I'm very passionate about. Now as opposed to the FIRE community, financial independence, retire early, this one feels that there's a lot more emphasis on actually you creating the incomes that allow you to change direction in your life and effectively retire from the corporate life. Now the focus again in this community, the side hustle, the Gary V mentality, actually you creating incomes in your spare time that basically allow you to then retire early. The focus again is on passive and semi-passive income. So again, I mean ways that you've created money to come towards you, not through investments this time, but basically offering skills and services to the world where they will pay you even whilst you sleep. So you don't need to exchange again your time for money, the complete emphasis of both of these strategies. Now it predominantly works on using online business ideas because that way a lot of people can get access to the skills, the tools that you want to sell them and then pay you regardless of the location. So think about side hustles traditionally like Amazon, fulfilled by Amazon, where you're selling products, writing courses, selling eBooks, so doing that on the Kindle store. You can even do YouTube, be a content creator, you can help people by coaching, different ways that you're allowing your skill set, even doing things on Fiverr or people per hour, where you're simply doing other people's work for them for a price, but it's allowing you to create that mini self-employed business that then allows multiple streams of income towards you, regardless of what you're doing in your day job. Now, the great thing here, especially with the side hustle mentality and community, as I've said, is passive incomes. So it's all about how can we automate this process and focus on that so that we don't need to exchange our time for money in the traditional ways of having a business on the side. How can I actually make this as simple as possible that I don't need to be in the same country, the time zone, somebody will pay me, get my product and service, even perhaps without me actually doing anything further. So for example, being a content creator like I am on top of my day job, I basically do books, courses, I make YouTube videos where I'll get revenue from ads as well. So people are paying me in different ways, but as soon as I've made the product, I then can sell it multiple multiple times. The quality does not diminish in any way, but people are still getting the value and service that they want from me providing it. Now, ultimately with side hustles, it's completely based on your skill set and your talents. So I couldn't offer the same products that you could as watching this, but that does mean that traditionally any skills that you've learned from your day job could be then applied to having your own company, a side hustle on the side. And it's one way very quickly you can bring a lot of money to you. So it's also completely limitless in what you can actually bring as part of your side hustle if you think about it. You're basically setting up a business idea. Compared to investments, there's always going to be some level of cap or some level of achievement based on what the returns of the stock market are or returns of your investment. In this case, it's completely dependent on what we want to achieve from it. It's completely dependent on the value of your skill set, what you can charge, and also what you want to offer. So there's really no limit on the amount of money that you can bring in that could replace your day job. So here's I see it at the complete positive sides of it. You're in complete control of the whole process. Unlike FIRE, you're then relying on the stock market or your investments returning back the money to you eventually. We're in control. And pretty much from day one, you could be bringing in an income from your side hustles, and even very quickly. In my one example, it took me about two years to meet my day job amount and then very quickly it ramped up and it's almost two and three times my day job salary. That's how quickly when you focus on passive incomes and semi-passive incomes, it really can change your life. We're not waiting on our portfolio that's going to take 10, 15 years down the line to achieve it. We're actually making it happen 
plus also getting fulfillment and offering value to other people. We're using our talents, our services, and doing something great with them rather than just wait on a day job wage for it. The other flip side as well is that there's a potential to actually sell off your company down the line. So again, that other option for actually having retirement, perhaps you could build a company or a product that somewhere down the line, somebody might want to buy it from you. It's completely possible. You could be employing other people as well, build up a huge corporation very quickly in a couple of years. And then you would then get a return on your any investment, plus also having that bonus of selling off your company for a large amount that you could absolutely live off as the dreaming goal. Now, the other thing why I love passive incomes and semi-passive incomes from side hustles as the main focus is because you are in control, but you can also do great things with your money as well. You can then decide to perhaps give to causes you believe in. You can work on your education. You can hire other people, give other people jobs. There's an endless opportunity then for this ripple effect. Sometimes the FIRE community is too focused on maybe just that nucleus, getting financial independence. With a side hustle, this could even be a way for other people to support their life with a job and career down the line. So let's look at the disadvantages. So without doubt, it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort, particularly if you're just starting out. This is not something that from day one you're working towards, unlike FIRE. FIRE, as soon as you put your first amount into investments and savings, you're on that journey. A day job and a side hustle requires you actually to do effort. You need to fine tune your skills that you're going to actually put out there. You need to research what is possible in terms of value and money you can get from it. You also need to make sure you've got a product that's going to sell. Investigate your future customer, what they want. There's a lot of factors. It is setting up a business, even though it's on top of your day job. And without doubt, you do need to spend time actually managing this. So if you think of the book Four Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, very famous book, inspired this generation of working from the beach as an entrepreneur. The reality is you're going to spend more than four hours if you do want the freedom and time back in your life from your day job. However, the rewards could hugely be in your favour when you do set up automation, when you do set up processes that allow you to be detached slightly and still bring in amounts of money that can support your life. Now, the other drawback is unfortunately with this get rich quick area that tends to be for side hustles, people also want to sometimes scam you with your money. They'll say, you know, invest in this, you can have a business that's ready made, please be aware people may take advantage of you when you're looking for your first side hustle opportunity. Try and make it something that you start from scratch, that you do not require a lot of money to start up because in most likelihoods, when someone's giving you a ready-made package, there's going to be drawbacks or they're going to be actually benefiting from your money rather than you. Now, remember with side hustles as well, you need to pay tax. You need to obviously set yourself up as a business down the line. So be aware that this just isn't simply saving or investing in those respects, you're actually building additional incomes. So it will require maybe an accountant, bookkeeping, all these skills you're going to have to learn. And really the knowledge that's going to have to be in place for you to progress is endless. Keep in mind that could be a longer life journey. But again, as I said, the opportunities, what you could do with it are then completely unlimited. For me and my passion, I really resonate with the FIRE community, but also with side hustles. We're working on FIRE. We're probably there already, actually, when you look at my side hustles. I've achieved it. I don't need to work, but I do really love the independence I get from having side hustles. I'm creating income. I'm creating ways to support my family. And that's something hugely exciting rather than waiting on the stock market doing it for me. So as I say, both ways are very distinct, very different ways. But as you can tell, they've both got their relative positive and negative sides. And hopefully that's given you a lot of information for you to consider. And if you do want to start a side hustle, you're in the right place as well. I've got tons of videos all about actually ideas that you could start making money from. I've managed to do it in a couple of years myself, replacing basically my day job income. So I know anyone can do it. And I really hope if you do resonate with this, that you do give it a try as soon as you can. So in essence, which one of the options at FIRE over having additional income side hustles, which one is right for your unique situation? Well, ultimately, it's all down to your goals. Both fundamentally have the one goal in mind. It's all about giving back your time rather than having to work the nine to five job. FIRE will get you there, absolutely, but it's a long game. And it also might require you doing some creative things with actually how much money you're spending in your life in the short term until you hit a certain date or a certain value in investments. Having 
side hustles though, I think really is the faster route. It will require a lot more effort. It's not just saving money that's required. It's actually your time and your skills, perhaps starting multiple businesses in order to get there. And then there's also the maintenance aspect. This isn't usually something you can just start once and then keeps going for years and years. You might well have to do a couple of hours or 10 hours a week to maintain the income into you. But ultimately they're both getting to the same direction. And that's what I really urge you to say to yourself. Is this something that you want for your own life? Do you feel particularly stuck in your nine to five job looking for options? Which one feels like it could be the right solution for you in the short term whilst also working on your long term goals as well? You will absolutely achieve financial independence even if you're saving five, 10 percent of your income, you will get there. Which route then makes sense to you and how quickly you want to get there and how much effort's involved. So I hope today's video has been really useful for you. If you've stumbled upon my channel, please do hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you on this journey with financial freedom. We also talk about personal finance, investing and success mindset. Tons of videos on my channel also about the stock market. If you want to start investing to actually work out your fire number and things like that, go and check out lots of my videos on the topic. And as well, if you fancy a side hustle outside your day job, tons of videos as well, all about suggestions, how I do it in my time as well. So if you have enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up. And as I said, please do leave me a comment on which side do you fall? Are you more fire orientated or are you more on the side of side hustles? So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.